Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another unboxing. Today I get to unbox something a little different. Uh, this is my first Corelli. It is the Dementor. It is a 1 8 scale stunt truck. Um, it's something I've had my eye on for a while. They've been out now for a little over a year. They just came out with the V2, which is what this is, the 2021 version they call it. Uh, it literally came out the end of November and I just happened to be lucky enough to get one. And anyways, let's get to the unboxing. All right, guys, with the truck out of the box, what can I say? This thing looks wicked. Um, I'm actually very surprised at the body. I didn't think the body um, was going to look as good as it did. I actually, you know, in the pictures um, online, it looks very boring, very flat. I get that, yeah, that's, you know, the flat is the look that they're going for. But, um, you know, I never even noticed that these were, the flames were actually two-tone, that there was two different colors there. Um, they're painted by the way they're not decals like a lot of other companies now they're that are kind of doing that and I really don't like that so I'm glad that they stuck having a true painted body uh, you know the windows and the Corelli sticker down here of course they're stickers but besides from that everything else is painted um, and again I'm very surprised I I really didn't think I was gonna like it I you know I already started kind of looking for a clear body and was thinking like oh I wonder if I can fit one of the other type stunt truck bodies on it but I'm actually very happy with how it looks and I won't be changing it for a bit but what I want to do now guys is get that body off and show you what in my opinion is one of the best looking RTRs I've seen yet so like I was saying I have never seen a truck out of the box that looks as good as this does the black and the red which is kind of the Corelli colors just looks wicked um you know i was looking at the shocks you've got an aluminum body an aluminum cap and then a red aluminum anodized collar i just love guys the way that looks you know i buy <clears throat> different collars i'll buy you know aluminum caps i always try to you know clean up i was i always for some reason like shocks i don't know what it is but you know, I find some companies, I can't stand the silver springs. It, every time I see a silver spring on, a, on an RC, it makes me think, you know, like Canadian Tire or, or Walmart brand. And I know that makes no sense. A spring is a spring. But I just, I, I don't like them. So seeing that these come with black springs just really, 
Uh, it makes me excited. Plus, everything else you see, like all these little red anodized bits, they just make the truck look um, more high-end. It makes it look more expensive. It makes it look like, you know, you've bought a higher quality RC. All right, guys, what I want to do is quickly talk about the electronics. You have a 25 kilogram servo, aluminum servo horn, 2050 kV motor, 150 amp speed control. It's obviously 6S. And without getting too much into it, this thing is going to be a beast, guys. I watched a video, I can't remember who has it up right now, uh, where they use the Kronos, the V2. So it's the, it's the same truck, it's just a little bit longer. Where they ran it against an Erevo. The only thing was, this was running 4S, and the Erevo was running 6S, and they basically looked the exact same. Like, the Erevo couldn't catch it when this thing jumped in front. It was crazy. So, I'm super excited to run this truck. The only crappy thing right now is, is that we literally just got 8 inches, 9 inches of snow yesterday. Uh, I was really hoping this thing was going to show up before then so I could kind of get it out because we still have grass on the ground. But I'm still going to find it, you know, time to get out. I'm going to find a place to get out where I can run it because I'm very, very excited to run this truck and see what it's capable of doing. I can't... And I would like to, I can't really touch on the V1 versus V2 because I did not own one. I know that they changed the arms. I know that they've added, actually, I'm going to bring you guys in for a better look here. Give me All one right. second. I want to do this without making everybody sick. What I'm pointing to and trying to emphasize right now is this rear brace. So right there on the V1s. The brace came down and it was like a skinny single sort of piece brace that came all the way up here. What they did now with these V2s is you can see you've got this composite plastic that runs, you know, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three inches along the bottom of the chassis, which should add a lot of strength because this is where you always have, you know, usually your bend. If you take a really bad jump and you land wrong or something like that, this is where you usually have the, have the problem. So having that brace run along the way it does should help in reducing that. I'm, I'm a little concerned. I'm hoping that that is going to work. I'm hoping that I won't have a problem. I may consider running um, some type of tower to tower brace on the truck. I don't know yet. I'm not sure if Corelli has any plans for anything like that. I doubt anybody from the company is watching this video, but I would be curious to see. I would be curious to see if they release an aluminum version of this same one. I know there's an aluminum version of the V1 where it's just kind of a sort of a straight piece and it doesn't have that kind of flat bottom type thing that you see here. Again, right there. Um, I would love to see an aluminum version of that, but something also that maybe ties up into the shock tower. So you get, you know, more, um, you get more bracing all the way up to your shock tower because they kind of did that in the front. As you can see, the front brace starts down at the bottom, boom, off the chassis, comes up. But then you've got this second part that goes into the front shock tower. So you've got this great brace in the front. Just for some reason, I don't know why they didn't tie that in and do something like that similar in the rear. I wish they would have, um, because again, I'm not going to lie guys, that's a bit of a concern I have. If you check out the Kronos, um, they've got something going on. Again, they've got the slightly longer chassis, but they've got a completely different rear end here where they've got two braces that kind of channel up into the, the rear shock tower and stuff like that. So I would have liked to have seen something like that on this truck. But I mean, again, I have not driven the truck, which means I haven't jumped the truck. So I don't know how well... You know, this thing, guys, may not have any problems at all. I won't know until I actually start jumping it and see how it does. All right, so I got the body back on because I want to address something. I want to address the elephant in the room right now. A lot of you guys are looking at this saying, hey, it looks like an Arma Notorious. It looks like a clone, especially when you got the body on. If you guys didn't already notice, when the body's off, there's nothing under there that looks like any of the other trucks. That's their platform. That's how they did it nothing looks the same however the body the wheels and tires tires mainly do look a lot like the armor notorious 
slash outcast. And I remember when I first saw this truck, I kind of thought like, why would they do that? Why would they, you know, blatant copy? You know, it didn't make any sense to me. And then I've been thinking about it. And I thought, you know what? It makes sense. Corelli has been around for a while. They make high-end RC race cars, pan cars, stuff like that. Very high quality stuff. Honestly, guys, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. Just go check out some of their cars. They are gorgeous. So you're a company now. You want to step out. You want to go and you want to get into this basher market. It's a huge market. Let's face it. It's probably the biggest in RC right now. So you're making a stunt truck. The first thing that comes to mind when you hear stunt truck is Arma Outcast, Arma Notorious. So it would make sense that Corelli would say, well, you know what? Let's make the truck similar. And understand something, guys, just, just think about it. How many trucks look like other trucks out there? It would be like saying that if somebody makes another Truggy and it looks like a low C8 that they're copying. No, it's a truggy look. Right now, this old style body, this old style, um, you know, rat rodish type looking body is your first kind of, when you see it, you automatically think stunt truck. So it makes sense that they would say, you know what, let's do this. Because when you see this now, if you, even as you landed on the thumbnail, you probably thought, hey, was this a new Arma? Did they, did he, is it a new body? And then all of a sudden you read, you know, the, the title and you were like, whoa, 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 no, this is a totally different truck. So it makes sense. Now, saying that, I would love to, to have seen like a short box Ram type body on it. You know, short box, step side, something like that. I think that would have looked really, really cool. I think having the short box look still would have made people think stunt truck, but it just would have been different. So I'm hoping that when they do their V3 version, that they kind of change things up a little bit. Um, just because I don't think they need to worry about copying anybody or making people think like, hey, we have a stunt truck. We have a truck now. We have a stunt truck too. I don't think they need to do that. Um, because again, guys, this is all based on the fact that I haven't driven the truck yet. But based on looks and what I can see, and as I've, I mean, I've spent a lot of time, guys, with the, with the truck off camera too, just checking it out. They, they really look like they've done their work. They refer to their diffs as bulletproof. And I have yet land on a video where anybody has any you know issues with the diff. Yeah, there's tuning and all that kind of fun stuff. But I mean, hey, that's not a big deal. So again, I'm hoping that in the future when they release a V3, or maybe even they'll just release a body um, where they do, like I said, something like a short box, you know, step side type body. Um, I think it was like back in the 90s, GMC had them and stuff like that. You know, the, the step side bodies. I always thought those were kind of cool. So I, I think, you know, if they did something like that with this truck, it would just kind of help them not look like they're a clone. You know, um, I'd read, you know, some things online where people, you know, were, trying, were you know, comparing this to, um, you know, the Red Cat and the Team Magic type thing where they are actually the same truck. The anodizing is different, but they're actually the same truck. That is not what's going on here. They are by no means the same truck. All right, guys, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't have a V1, so it's hard for me to really talk a lot about the differences. Um, however, according to the website, they these are V2 arms. They've been beefed up. They are going to be hopefully a lot stronger. Um, well, I only say hopefully because I'm assuming they wouldn't weaken the arms. Um, so they definitely should add um, a lot of durability. And to be fair, guys, I watched many, many videos on the V1 trucks, and they didn't seem to have a lot of issues with the arms either, or at least the ones I landed on. I do believe that they actually had an upgrade kit uh, that was available to the V1s, and these, again, I believe are another arm. So, again, these are the V2 arms, obviously, because it's the V2 truck. So, maybe if somebody's watching this video and, and they can explain that better, please drop it in the comments, because... As far as I know, there's three arms out there, or there's just two. I honestly don't know. But these, I found this kind of odd. You don't have adjustable turn buckles. So you basically have like this fixed link here. Um, it is a higher quality plastic. It's not your basic, you know, generic plastic or anything like that. Um, it's, I think, I don't know how they refer to it. I think it's composite or something like that. But basically where it's like, you know, plastic that's been like infused, um, with another material that just, you know, makes it a lot stronger 
than just, you know, your same, you know, your basic plastic, like some would probably, you know, let's say these guards are or something like that. These would be made out of a lot, a, a different material than let's say something like this, because these don't really need to be strong. This does need to be strong. So again, we won't know until I get out and I start running the truck, but I really, I don't, I'm not really worried. I don't think from what I've, I've seen from Corelli and, and what I've seen in just the videos I've watched, um, these don't seem to be, they don't seem to have any issues with the arms at all. So again, I'm super excited to get out with this truck um, because then I want to be able to guys give you a more, I don't want to say honest, but just an actual like, hey, this is what I learned from running the truck. And then I so that I can say, hey, yeah, you know what? The arms are amazing. These links are amazing. You don't have to worry about them. Don't think that you need to have turnbuckles. Right now, it's hard for me to say that because again, I have not driven the truck. And even when I start driving the truck right now, it's gonna be snow and it's gonna be cold. And we know what happens to plastic when it gets cold. So I don't know what kind of running I'm gonna be doing in the next little while, but um, I guess really the test won't come till spring and summer, uh, just because again, winter, cold, is yucky for plastic. All right, so we're in the back of the truck now and we are checking out this massive wheelie bar. Look at this thing. You've got these two braces here that go down, kind of like right in behind the hinge pins. And then you can see, hopefully you can see under there where it goes underneath the wing. And then it comes right into guys, the shock tower. Look at that, that is wicked. That is crazy. Um, oh, look at, see, this is guys is what I'm talking about. Sorry to kind of get off subject, but I love these details. This just looks proper. It looks nice and clean. Love the red anodization. Anyways, okay guys, back to the wheelie bar. Um, you know, it's sort of weird. On the V1, they had these two aluminum plates that kind of went down. And then, you know, when I was watching, when I saw that, I thought that's kind of odd. You know, if you were to take a really bad landing, you'd bend those and then you'd be done. Here, it definitely looks, and again, you kind of can tell it's that, it's that like um, composite plastic type thing. It looks like, it doesn't look like just generic plastic. So it looks like it'll be a lot stronger um, and hopefully handle like, you know, let's face it, you do, you know, you either usually land nose first or you come down right back here. So hopefully this will, you know, hold it to the pounding and, and not break and not shatter into a million pieces on the first jump, but it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with that. I like that look. It's definitely clean. Uh, the wing looks good. It's got a cool shape to it. Um, you know, should before perform, you know, a good amount of downforce and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I don't even think I would notice it. Um, as usually all I do with my trucks is kind of fly them in the air. So, but it looks good. I like the way it looks on the truck. I've talked a lot about, you know, the fit and kind of finish on this truck and basically how, you know, premium it feels. And, you know, it's funny because even when you go underneath the truck, the front, and rear skid plate they look like something that should be aftermarket they look like you know something that rpm would have came out with that you know i would have installed on and it's not these are stock they're they are new to the v2s the v1s didn't have these but you know just even things like these um you know kind of like conical washers and stuff the way the screws sit and all that stuff it just looks really good and while i was looking at the truck earlier um i came across something that is very 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 cool and it's something that's often overlooked. And I don't usually hear people talking about it. But most of you guys, all you bashers, you racers, you're going to go, yeah, that's really important. All right, guys, I'm going to try to show this the best I can. We're at the back of the truck. Now, most of you guys know that you want to hear that. You want to hear that slap. So if you push down on this whole truck right now, Those skids and the chassis are taking the grunt. So when you land this truck, your shocks aren't basically bottoming out before your chassis slaps. So I have often watched videos where people talk about that and like it's a bad thing. No, no, that's a good thing. You want that. What's even cooler on this truck is even after you've come down, Check this out. I'm hopefully this will show on video. You are still left with travel. So you've already 
you know, smashed your truck down, you still have travel on the shock. That is huge for your shocks. Like, I, I can't explain that, guys, um, and emphasize that enough. You want that. And it's funny. Um, <laughs> oh, man, here I go. About to lose a few subscribers. Um, you Erevo 2.0 guys, try that. It'll explain why you have so many problems with your shocks. Don't hate me. Don't yell at me. I'm just pointing something out. You want that. That, having a truck come down and be able to land... Like that is what you want. That chassis will take the slap and it saves your shocks and it saves all those parts. And for some reason, and I know, I know you guys know this, but I don't really understand why that isn't emphasized enough in videos. But uh, anyways, guys, one last thing I want to show you. All right, so the last few things I want to talk about um, are things that sometimes I don't even bother addressing in videos, but I thought I would do it with this one. One, you get a manual for the truck, you get a manual for the radio. You get an antenna tube. And that's it. There are no tools. That, for most people in this hobby, is probably not a big thing. The reason I say that is most of us probably have a great collection of tools already. And you're probably not using those little teeny tiny kind of multi-tools and stuff like that. Those things are great to throw in your, you know, your, your pit box, your toolbox, you know, you throw it in something so that when you're out and about, and if you really need to do something, you have, you know, a little tool with you, but you're not going to use those to work and wrench on your trucks. They're just not comfortable. You're going to go out, you're going to buy yourself some good tools. I've got lots of different, I've got a couple of different brands and lots of different tools um, because it really, it makes fun, more fun wrenching on the truck. Anyways, second radio. Um, yeah, it's surprisingly comfortable in the hand. Um, but I mean, again, anybody that's been on this channel before knows I've got my 7PX. I run this on all my cars. So the stock RTR radio isn't all that important to me. Um, I'll probably end up, I usually end up either selling them or I'll throw them into um, a vehicle that my son, you know, usually ends up driving and stuff like that. I've got a Spectrum radio in his Max. Um, even though I drive the Max every once in a while, that is his truck. All right, guys, there you have it. The Corelli Dementor. I know this video went on a lot longer than it should have, but I just really wanted to show you guys every, you know, angle, every nook and cranny, every part, everything about this truck. It looks amazing. Um, I'm excited to drive it. And I'm just, you know, I'm hoping that it holds up to what I'm expecting out of it because, um, you know, I'm not some crazy 80 foot in the air guy, but I do like to jump. Uh, I like to backflip. I like to front flip. And I, and I want a truck that can take it. You know, when a truck does a serious crash and you break something, you know what? That's allowed. That's okay. But if you take a, you know, a, a good jump and you land the way you're supposed to, and you still have issues, you still have some bend going on. That's not cool. But again, like I've mentioned so many times in this video, I've yet to drive the truck. This is just my unboxing, my initial impressions video, just kind of showing everybody what this truck is all about. And again, please stay tuned. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get some half decent weather so I can get out and run this truck before, um, well, before spring, because right now that's how it's looking. But I will be, you know, taking it to, you know, a couple of parking lots and stuff like that. And at least just, you know, ripping it around and getting a couple speed runs and stuff out of it. But anyways, guys. Thanks for watching. If you watched all this video, thank you so much because I know it went on for a long time. But as always, guys, if you did like the video, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe and enjoy the pics.